Today, we are rebuilding the Los Angeles Rams, but every time I win a game, Ooh. I get to steal a player from the opposing team, which will be decided by this magical wheel of truth. That may prove to be a bit more difficult than you may think, because with an up-to-date roster loaded from the Madden community share, we have the Rams as the worst team in the NFL at only a 71 rated overall team. Oh yeah, and I cut Cooper Cup from the team too, because you know, I'm a masochist and I just love pain. Oh yeah, and this wheel has every single position on it even fullback so assuming we can actually win a game here we may come away with only a fullback or a puncher for our troubles whichever position we land on i will steal any player who plays that position from the opposing team and trade away one of my own back from the same position and we'll see how long it takes for us to win a super bowl if ever and let me tell you ladies and gentlemen this is gonna be a lot harder than we may think if you are a los angeles rams fan i feel for you because this team is not good at all i mean as far as on the offense our highest rated overall player is right tackle rob havenstein and then we have of course cam Akers and tyler higby but the rest of the team does not look good at all we still have aaron donald on defense so that's the one bright spot i mean come on i I had to give us something so i mean ain't nothing to it but to do it as they say taking on the buffalo bills in our very first game they are an 85 rated overall team we are a 71 so a difference of 14 points hey i mean stranger things have happened miracles do happen have they as they say maybe we will win our first game of the season and we do not we lose 28 21 but i mean hey i guess the silver lining every team in our division did lose their first opening game so there you go atlanta falcons next on the docket and imagine beating them and stealing Bijan robinson or someone like that who just got drafted in this past draft but i'll tell you what i would also love to add somebody like kyle pitts to my team but remember it is not up to me to decide who we add if we beat a team it is up to the magical wheel of truth so will the Rams get our first win of the season in week number two? Ooh. And no, we do not. We lose 35-21. I hope you guys got your popcorn, sitting down, getting comfortable, because it is going to be a long first season. And hey, look at that. We actually did win our game in week three against the Arizona Cardinals, 31-24. So we get to officially steal our first player of the season. Imagine adding somebody like Kyler Murray to the team or deandre hopkins or buda baker the cardinals aren't very good but they definitely have some pieces that could instantly help this los angeles rams team come on magical wheel give me something good give me something good don't give me a fullback or something crazy like that and we got right guard okay well let's see who the cardinals have at right guard i can tell you whoever it is it's gonna be an instant upgrade over mr coleman here and okay i mean nothing flashy nothing sexy here but will hernandez is gonna be an instant upgrade so i will take him and just like that our first trade of the season goes through and if you're wondering why will hernandez is a 32 rated overall punter i just changed his position to a punter that way the trade will go through guaranteed it saves me the headache of switching users or controlling the cardinals forcing the trade etc etc it just makes life easier for me and i need all the help i can get in that department playing with this los angeles rams team but as you can see mr hernandez is back in his rightful position at his correct overall safe and secure in his new los angeles rams uniform i gotta be honest i didn't expect to get our first win in week three but you know what i am definitely not arguing it with it let's make it two in a row shall we let's go ahead and beat the san francisco 49ers and maybe steal Christian McCaffrey that would be great nope we lose 24 17 hey you know what can't win them all can't say I'm surprised with that and now we take on the Dallas Cowboys who just have tons of players I mean I would steal Dak Ezekiel Elliott Michael Micah Parsons CD Lamb I mean virtually anybody on the Cowboys roster I would be happy with I guess miracles don't happen after all but I'll tell you what it was a close one 32 
to 24. You can't be too mad at that. We actually have a breakout D line and a breakout DB. Marquise Copeland. Okay. I mean, hey, guess what? I would be happy if he could move up to a star development player. I don't know what's going to happen. I guess we're going to have to hold the Panthers to 100 rushing yards or get Marquise Copeland one interception, force fumble, tackle for loss or sack. But we also have a breakout DB scenario as well. So chance for two at Jordan Fuller. Okay. Jordan Fuller could move up to star dev and that's pretty big because hey let's be honest our roster is terrible it's garbage it's dog doo-doo it's a dumpster fire so if they want madden wants to bump up two of my players to star dev i am a-okay with that i feel like the universe is telling me right now that we are gonna get this w and be able to steal hopefully brian burns from the panthers and the universe lied to me why do you do that universe Hey, I mean, we're one and five, but uh, glass half full. We are in the bye week, so we definitely can't lose. Did any of these players get... Okay, well, Marquise no. Copeland is going to move up to star development. There we go. We are rolling out the red carpet for this man because he now has star development. San Francisco again. We just played him looking for our second win of the season. We need to steal somebody besides a 74 rated overall right guard in this first season, and this is not going to be the week that we do that what the heck are our players doing to have us at one and six so far in the season i mean matthew stafford a respectable 13 touchdowns to three interceptions getting close to 2,000 yards cam Akers doesn't look like he's done really anything so far this season at not even 400 yards and only graced the end zone four times receiving i mean van jefferson has shown up but remember we did cut cooper cup and nobody else is really doing anything besides van jefferson and we have the worst offense in the league the 32nd ranked offense defense not much better at 21st and let's be honest here guys we are just terrible but i'm sure that everybody expected that to be the case i know i certainly did tampa bay bucks gonna be the next team we beat i can feel it in my bones i can feel it in my core every fiber of my being is telling me that this is going to be our second win of the year and it's not but hey we're taking on the cardinals who we already beat once so far this season maybe we can go ahead and steal another player from arizona that would be amazing no no i i just i i'm at a loss of words we are not winning any football games we've only stolen one player we've only spun that magical wheel of fate one time and we have only stolen a right guard so far i think i need to take a break we can't even beat the freaking seahawks man are you kidding me oh and all of our players are sad they don't want to be here they have red down pointing arrows next to their overall okay i mean one in eleven uh yeah we're taking on the raiders now and they are probably gonna kick us to the curb but I feel confident that we can get at least two, maybe three wins this season. It's going to be a slow grind, and we only score seven <laughs> points. How do you only score seven points in a football game? What happened? I mean, Matthew Stafford was sacked four times, so that's not going to help your odds. He didn't have any touchdowns. Meanwhile, you got Jimmy Garoppolo turning back the hands of time and looking like the second coming of Patrick Mahomes or something out here. And dude, we have no running game game cam Akers only 66 yards in that game and he's not doing our quarterback matthew stafford any favors maybe i need to upgrade my players i mean is that gonna help us win a game i don't know we're gonna let the cpu handle it 34 players were upgraded well that has to help our odds God, hey! but we are taking on the green bay packers here in week 15 and they do not have aaron Rodgers anymore that is right they have jordan love under center so i would love to see a victory in here late in the season no we allow jordan love to put up 49 points on us so that is amazing we are one in 13 we suck we have no hope in life we might as well just call it quits now. No wonder the Packers beat us. They don't even have Jordan Love. They have Tom Brady, who slung five touchdowns in this game. I wish I would have known that going into the game. We got three games left in the season. We've only won one game. We've only stolen one player. 
just if there's a mad and god smiling upon me from the heavens above please let us win one more game no i'm just gonna have to go through sim this quickly quick sims quick sims quick sims until we get that first w we have to get one more before the end of the season and no we can't beat the chargers but let's close this thing out with the win against the seahawks i'm confident that we can do it we only score seven points again oh my god this team is so terrible we literally had the worst record in the league we only won one game we only scored 17 points per game we were the worst team in the league when it comes to scoring points we had the second worst rushing offense we had the worst defense and we were red we had red squares in every single major category I, oh my God, I just want to spin this wheel. Please let me spin this wheel. I want to spin this wheel. On the bright side though, we are going to be letting the CPU handle everything else when it comes to drafting, signing free agents. We have $102 million in cap space. So maybe our GM will splash a little bit of cash and bring in some players that will organically raise this overall. And how about that Aaron Rodgers and the Jets make Super Bowl 57 in Aaron Rodgers first year suiting up in a Jets uniform I don't know if you guys can tell by my backdrop here but that kind of stings a little bit all that cap space and we only signed one free agent cornerback Ronald Darby I mean we could have at least spent something right maybe we'll hit on the draft maybe we'll sign some generational talents Maybe our front office can make up for the fact that we only signed one free agent and we can come away with some hidden gems and some players that are going to be part of this Los Angeles Rams team for years to come. I mean, wow. we did shoot up to a 77 rated or a 76 rated overall team. So I guess we did something. Now, is that through natural progression? And we looks like we signed our Matthew Stafford replacement. <laughs> Gordon Radigan out of Temple. Okay, 73 rated overall. And who is he going to be throwing the ball to? He's going to be throwing the ball to Martin Patrick out of Clemson, who is a 75 rated overall player in the third round. Remember, the Rams did not have a first round pick because of that Lions Matthew Stafford trade. So we hit on a quarterback in the second round who is 73 rated overall. And we really hit on a receiver in the third round who is 75 rated overall rest of the draft class was pretty lackluster i gotta be honest with you but we do got our quarterback of the future and he is hidden development also martin patrick is hidden development too so clap it up for the cpu they definitely made up for free agency by having a i would say a home run draft this is what our team is looking like in year number two gordon radigan actually now starting over matthew stafford he is one overall rated higher than him so maybe he'll have a breakout year and martin patrick our new wide receiver is also going to be starting as well uh, offensive line not really good aside from Rob Havenstein still got Cam Akers Van Jefferson now up to star development so that is great to see of course we still got Aaron Donald and we got most of the same pieces to the puzzle Ronald Darby being the only free agent that we brought in I mean we gotta win some games man I am itching to spin this wheel we're starting this week this season off against Seattle who I think is a beatable team and let's make this our first win of the season start this season off right can we get some good simulation no 21 16 loss and of course we lose to Joe Burrow Jamar Chase and the high-powered Bengals because why wouldn't we but hey look at that second win of the episode comes against the Philly Philadelphia Eagles Philadelphia Eagles have a lot of pieces that I would love to steal so Madden gods I need you right now come on wheel just give me quarterback give me halfback I'm okay with that give me defensive line not a tackle not a tackle left outside linebacker let's go Hassan Reddick gonna be our first 90 plus rated overall player and he is instantly gonna make our defense better playing alongside Aaron Donald and that is huge. I just can't believe we actually beat the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, you can go ahead and take Daniel here for Hassan Reddick any day of the week. 
Welcome to the team, Hassan Reddick the punter. Happy to have you. Just kidding. He is right where he should be and a great piece to this Los Angeles Rams puzzle going to instantly make our team better. And we just got our second win of the series. How about that? Can we make it two in a row, though? Playing an Arizona Cardinal team, Arizona Cardinals team that we already beat one time. Can we beat them twice and swipe another player from their roster? We can. Let's go. 28 10 victory. That is what I am talking about. Some decent options here, too. DeAndre Hopkins. Hopkins, Buda Baker, superstar. They got Byron Jones at corner. Marcus Peters, I guess he's no longer with the Ravens. Now on the uh, Cardinals, Hollywood Brown, Jalen Thompson. So some good options depending on what this wheel allows us to do. Watch me get fullback or something like that, punter. Just something we absolutely don't need. What? Left outside linebacker, really? We just got a left outside linebacker. Are you kidding me? I guess it's not so bad. As we acquire Leonard Floyd, the left outside linebacker, we move him over to the right side. And he is a 76 round overall player so he is an instant upgrade over Ooh. Michael here I would love to steal that man staring us right in the face at the screen here and get back-to-back -back wins already this season going a lot better than last season as we have doubled our win total from one to two can we beat the 49ers no we cannot seahawks though i think are a beatable team man i would love to steal me a dk metcalf or a tyler lockett or a jamal adams or somebody like that can we get our third win of the season we don't and we only score seven points we do got a breakout defensive lineman though so i'm all for upgrading players wow. dev traits bobby brown the third uh all right well yeah let's go ahead and hold the cowboys to less than 100 rush yards or get bobby brown an interception a forced fumble a tackle for loss and a sack well we did somehow manage to beat the dallas freaking cowboys with a stacked roster and plenty of players to steal and upgrade this team and okay bobby i see you out here doing your thing brother you're also gonna upgrade to star development so there you go but remember it is not up to us it is all in the hands of the madden gods and not a lot another linebacker okay right outside linebacker micah parsons can we add micah parsons to this team and and yeah, I mean, was there ever any question? You can go ahead and take Michael Hoyt. I am totally cool with that. So I don't know why the wheel keeps deciding to give us linebackers, but I mean, at least we know if anything, we are solid and ready to go in that department. And hey, look at that. Our QB Gordon Radigan is star development and our wide receiver that we drafted in the third round, Martin Patrick is also star development. So I guess that's pretty cool. I'll tell you what though, it would really be nice to get some offensive weapons here. So far we've gotten a guard and three linebackers. So if we continue to win games i would love to see us get a offensive weapon like a receiver and we beat the new york Gi giants 24 to 7 and just in case there were any doubters in the audience no we do not force win games around here this is all the madden gods smiling on us let's see what the good old wheel has in store for us here maybe not a linebacker quarterback the quarterback i mean we don't okay i was about to say we don't need daniel jones but we are going to be able to upgrade to the center position so we could go with justin Britt here who apparently doesn't have any shoulders Uh, he is eight years in already in his career, so maybe we go with Joshua Azudu, who is close to the same overall, but a little bit younger, so still with a chance to develop. It's not going to matter, though, because this is going to be a downgrade in the position, no matter how you cut it. Brian Allen is a 73 rated overall, but you know what? It's not up to me. I don't have a say-so in the matter. The wheel spoke, and we are going to have to swap center for center why does justin Britt not have any shoulders why is he a ghostly figure that is just floating 
is this because of the new update that updated some player portraits i don't know but that is actually kind of disturbing whatever it's a downgrade i mean i decided to go with joshua azudu as opposed to the shoulderless wonder justin Britt. Sometimes that's the way it happens. And so far, I guess the wheel only wants us to acquire offensive linemen and linebackers. And let's go, a win against the San Francisco 49ers. I swear, you can't make this stuff up, guys. Los Angeles Rams at five and four now, second place in the division. But can we steal some offense? Just give me something besides an offensive lineman or a linebacker, please. That is all i am asking for and you know what i will take right end yeah i will definitely take right end. now we have aaron donald at that position already but we can acquire nick bosa at right end and we can slide him over to the left side and between our defensive line and these linebackers i mean hey if nothing else our defense is about to be stacked welcome to the rams nick bosa you old 44 rated overall punter you bro we literally have nick bosa Aaron Donald and Micah Parsons playing on the same defense and also Hassan Reddick too. How are teams gonna be able to run against us? How are teams gonna be able to have any time in the pocket? We may not have anything going on offense, but I'll tell you what, our defense is something to be feared. Looks like we got the seventh ranked offense in the NFL currently and the 14th ranked defense as well. So definitely a vast improvement from what we saw in season number one. Our quarterback rookie Gordon Radigan also looks like he is balling out. 2,600 yards, we are in week 10 here. 18 touchdowns to only five interceptions. Respectable numbers as he is sitting amongst the top quarterbacks in the league in terms of passing. Run game looking a little better too, I gotta say, as Cam Akers has 706 yards and six touchdowns. What are our receivers doing? We haven't touched the receiver position since we first started this video. We still got Van Jefferson and Tutu Atwell and Tyler Higby. I would love to steal a superstar caliber wide receiver from one of these teams i gotta be honest with you defensively like i said we are a problem we got nick bosa aaron donald hassan reddick and micah parsons on the same team these four gents are literally going to be living in the backfield and no in case there were any doubters we do not force win games around here these are all our players stepping up and rising to the occasion lost to the commanders 14 to 7 haven't seen seven points scored in a while at least our defense did play really good only allowing 14 points but it looks like our offense couldn't score anything and might i add we are now up to an 80 rated overall team we are five and six on the season. I feel like we do and watch us beat the Steelers and then get freaking TJ Watt or something like that. I would just have an aneurysm. I wouldn't even know where to put this guy and we do beat the Steelers. Okay, so we will advance to six and six and I'm just begging you, please do not let me get a linebacker with this wheel spin. Offense, 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 offense. Najee Harris, Najee Harris can Najee Harris join the squad okay we got halfback on the wheel spin great to see you love to see that yeah even though we got Cam Akers I will most definitely take an 89 rated overall superstar development player in Najee Harris Cam Akers can play backup running back for all I care. This is going to make our team much better. Cam Akers straight up for Najee Harris. You know, I still got to make sure that I'm a responsible GM and managing our cap space and making sure that that is all good to go. So I think Cam Akers for Najee Harris is a solid trade. And we know that Madden simulation can be very strange. The last thing I would want would be for them to be splitting reps between Cam Akers and Najee Harris or something like that. So I think Cam Akers for Najee Harris makes the most sense. Nice to also see a superstar development player next to old Gordon here. 
Offense still not looking that great. We definitely need to improve on our offensive line. Maybe get a superstar or X factor caliber receiver in here as well. Defense, I mean, we gotta be the best front seven in the league. We could stand to get a cornerback, you know, free safety or something like that. But all in all, this Rams team is really starting to come together. And I got a good feeling about it. We're six and six, second place in the division. It's definitely, most definitely still in the playoff hunt. So we're taking on the Baltimore Ravens here. They are nine and three. Gonna be a tough one, but they say if you can dream it, you can do it. If you believe it, you can achieve it. If you got it, go out and get it. Does that make sense? No. Did we win? No. I'm saying the Cardinals must absolutely hate us by now because we have beat them three or maybe even four times in a row. And we are gonna steal another one of their players. I'll take a Hollywood Brown or a DeAndre Hopkins at this point right now. Can I get, don't tell me it's a linebacker, another Come freaking on, linebacker. Man. What are we going to do with all these linebackers on our team? I mean, I guess I'm not upset with a hidden development rookie Martavis Pruitt out of Auburn, but this is actually probably going to be a downgrade. Welcome to the squad, Martavius, and goodbye, Leonard Floyd. I don't know why we keep getting linebackers. We got more linebackers, or we've had more linebackers than we know what to do with. We're taking on the Cleveland Browns here. They got tons of pieces, and we literally only scored three points against them. So no Nick Chubb, no Amari Cooper. We're taking on the Texans here, and this is actually a pivotal game. We are seven and eight on the season. San Francisco 49ers are also seven and eight. Let's, I feel like if we win these last two games, we can maybe make the wild card as a playoff team. And it looks like, okay, actually, as a matter of fact, we already are in the playoffs, us and the San Francisco 49ers. What is going on here in this NFC? Two, seven, and eight teams already in the playoffs. What is happening here? Yeah, NFC is just terrible. How are the Cowboys five and 10? NFC is just terrible. Well, you have us and the 49ers already in the playoffs as seven and eight. So we, aside from stealing players, yes, that is great. We need to beat the Houston Texans in this game. We also got a breakout player message from last week. Did somebody earn a dev trade? Nope. Darion Kendrick, he is frustrated. He is angry. He is not having a good time. Got to be able to beat the Texans, right? Come on, man. This is pivotal. I would love, We. this is our second season. We got to make the playoffs. That would be huge. If we make the playoffs in our second season, that would be huge. And we lost to the freaking Houston Texans. But luckily, the San Francisco 49ers also lost as well. So what does that mean? Are we still in the playoffs? As of right now, we are still in the playoffs as the sixth seed in this terrible NFC. What's our team looking like this so far this season? Gordon Radigan, rookie, almost 4,000 yards passing. 28 touchdowns to 14 interceptions, so about a two to one ratio. Matthew Stafford also had one completion for six yards. Bruh. Najee Harris balling out. Those stats are a little bit skewed because a lot of that's probably from Pittsburgh, but he is about to cross 1,300 for the season with 12 touchdowns, so that's pretty good. Gordon Radigan scrambling around there a little bit as well. Got to add a wide receiver, man. Van Jefferson cannot, will not, should not, be our number one option he's been our number one option since we started this rebuild and defense i'm sure is just phenomenal nick bosa with 14 sacks reddick with 13 donald with 12 so three players in the double digit sack range you love to see that this is big couple of seven and nine teams going at it this has a lot of playoff implications if we lose this game i don't know if we will be in the playoffs if we win it we are assured a playoff berth so can we do it can we do it they ask you how you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine but you just we did not beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the San Francisco 49ers 
did win. So that effectively eliminates us from the playoffs. We were so close as the Detroit Lions snag that seventh seed in the NFC. That one is a tough pill to swallow. That one is definitely a heartbreaker. Uh -huh. Washington Commanders and Cincinnati Bengals in the Super Bowl. That's something that you probably haven't heard too much and you probably won't hear that for a very long time to come, if ever. Thought maybe Gordon Radican might get the uh, NFC Offensive Rookie of the Year honors, but no, that is stolen away from him by Luke Taylor. Sounds like the next up and coming country and Western singer. At least Hassan Reddick wins the best linebacker award in the NFC. That's pretty cool. I would say defense definitely did their thing and balled out to no one's surprise. We had the number two defense in the league in terms of points per game. Number six defense defense in the league in terms of in terms of pass yards per game but it is our offense we had the 30th ranked offense in terms of offensive points per game we have got to upgrade this offense with some receivers some tight ends the offensive line i just really need this wheel to be freaking kind to me man cincinnati Bengals win the super bowl so okay there you go joe cool getting one and we just really need, we have 80, we have $59 million in cap space. We really need our front office to come out, help our cause out, sign some really good players, maybe wide receiver, cough, cough, Van Jefferson should not be our number one option. Maybe our front office can step up and make a splash in free agency and improve this team. That's a little more like it, making a you know a couple plays here. We got left guard Aaron Brewer, got to get better on that offensive line. Jordan Fuller, who I guess left our team and we brought him back in free agency we got emmanuel mosley we did need to upgrade that cornerback position brian edwards not sure how good he really is but i love to see a wide receiver we got a middle linebacker alex anzalone and we got jonah williams who is a good left tackle and we needed to get better on the offensive line so there we go offense looking a little bit better nothing crazy would like to see some more yellow or some more red in there the superstar the superstar x factor but we are coming along so we can't really be too upset with that defense we're still crazy we're still great we're still balling out but we gotta probably still get better in cornerback and then a free safety would be nice to acquire as well so let's see what our front office does in this draft we really need a home run because we got to make the playoffs next season and that's what i'm talking about front office what did i say we had to get better at the free safety position what do we do we go out and draft a free safety in the first round tyree stamper who is a hidden development player 75 rated overall that is how you draft smart and i'm also not going to complain about a left guard in the second round named owen who is also hidden development as well starting out year number three with a victory over the san francisco 49ers division rival so i am not mad at that at all can we please get some offense for the love of everything that is holy free safety we just drafted one so we don't even need that we got four free safeties man do we really need to add another one we have somebody with the last name of yeast how are we gonna rise to the top like yeast if we're bringing in another free safety that we don't even need i guess we'll go ahead and take ambry thomas but i'll tell you what he is not starting over our rookie hidden development player that we just drafted tyree stamper that much is for certain you know what i'm gonna move ambry thomas to corner because why not have a star development player he was better than the other guy we had starting at cornerback we don't need free safeties we got about seven of those so ambry thomas will slide over over as our cb number two w number two comes against the chicago bears in week two and i'll tell you old dj moore sounds pretty good right about now would love to see a wide receiver wide receiver can we get there it's another freaking linebacker why do you do this to me wheel why do you hate me what have i done in my life to wrong you to where you want to keep giving me freaking linebackers 
And no, this is not good. The only left outside linebacker we have is Hassan Reddick, which means we have to trade him. And who do the Bears even have at linebackers these days? Jack freaking Sanborn. We have to trade Hassan Reddick for Jack Sanborn. I don't even have to change him to a punter because that trade's going to go through. No question. And that is a 100% downgrade. We did not need to see that. Hassan, you have served us so well, my brother, but you are going to go over to the Windy City and we are going to acquire Jack freaking Sanborn. No! Oh my God. We're trying to upgrade here, not downgrade. Defense still looking good. I mean, it's everybody's either star hidden developments x factor except for emmanuel mosley and alex anzalone so defense still looking good but man that one stings and we better just throttle our division rival the san francisco 49ers i need a palate cleanser right now because i did not want to get rid of hassan reddick so the only thing that's going to make me happy is okay. a victory against the San Francisco 49ers, which we do get. And the Los Angeles Rams advance to 3-0 here in year number three. I am literally begging you, George Kittle or Debo Samuel? George Kittle or Debo Samuel? George Kittle, it was almost George Kittle, but we're going to have to settle for a left guard. Well, I'll tell you what, we're definitely not getting rid of Owen Howard, who we just drafted, the hidden development left guard so you know what jeffrey blackwell it's been nice knowing you uh, you've done a serviceable job for us i guess but we are gonna go ahead and acquire punter aaron banks and aaron banks will actually fit in pretty nicely as a converted center seeing as how joshua azudu does not want to develop for whatever reason so i guess you know i'll take it as a w offensive line does get a little bit better suffering our first loss of the season to the detroit lions of all teams and now we are tied with the arizona cardinals for the number one seed in the nfc west at three and one we're taking on the new england patriots who are zero and four so you have to imagine that this could be a w for us here to advance to four and one, keeping my fingers crossed here as I really want to steal another player. And that will be a 38-24 victory over the New England Patriots to move the Los Angeles Rams to number one. Patriots do have Juju Smith-Schuster. They got Michael Wenyu. Uh, those would be some good players that we could add to our roster. We don't really need necessarily defense. I would also take Mike Gusecki and or hunter henry they have two very good tight ends but remember it's not up to us it is up to the madden wheel of fate come on just give me wide receiver or tight end wide receiver or tight end wide receiver or tight end not left guard that's really not what i wanted uh pfft, man we just can't get any skill position players can we I mean, again, Cole Strange, yes, he is good, but we just freaking got a left guard, and maybe we can convert him to one of the other positions that we are lacking in, I suppose. I mean, I guess it's a slight W, but it's really not what I wanted to see. Goodbye, Aaron Brewer. Welcome to the squad, Cole Strange. Guess I'm not too upset with it as we convert Cole Strange to a right guard, from a left guard and now our offensive line does look pretty good these rams are actually playing extremely well so far this season as we are four and one first place in the nfc west taking a look at our team stats here we're 13th in the league so far in offensive yards per game and we are second in the nfl in defensive yards per game I'm sure to no one's surprise. Our now second year man from Temple, Gordon Radigan, has 1,200 passing yards so far this season. 12 touchdowns to only four picks. So a pretty good ratio there. Najee Harris almost at 500 yards. I believe I saw that he was the sixth leading rusher in the league. Only found the end zone twice. So that's kind of unfortunate. Still looking to get a true number one receiving option as now Brian Edwards is our leading receiver. That's scary. May God have mercy on your soul. 
and Martin Patrick, our now second year man from Clemson, is our second leading receiver. Guess Van Jefferson decided to part ways because he is no longer here. And defensively, I'm sure we are just wreaking havoc. Nick Bosa doing his thing at six sacks. Micah Parsons and Aaron Donald also tied at three and a half. And if we look at interceptions here, Tyree Stamper, the rookie that we drafted, the free safety, Dev Trey almost revealed he could be superstar, superstar X factor possibly. He leads our team in interceptions. So of course our defense is balling out. We knew that that would be the case. Somehow we lost to the Seahawks 20 to 10. They weren't even that good. And that one may prove to sting as we progress further into this season. And we lost to the Dolphins as well. So no stealing Jalen Ramsey, no stealing Tyreek Hill, I guess. And now we are on a slippery slope, my friends, because we have find ourselves still in the lead in the NFC West, yes, Luckily, the division is not that strong, but we are four and three. Cardinals right on our heels. I will say that we have improved this team to an 82 rated overall team, and we have already beaten the Cowboys once. So can we beat them up for a second time and maybe grab one of these great weapons that the Cowboys have? No, now all of a sudden we are on a losing streak. So what the heck is happening? I know one thing that's happening is we got a breakout DB scenario and it is for Ambry Thomas, who we did convert to cornerback. Now he is already star development. So I guess he has a chance to move up to superstar. Back in the W column with a win against the Bolts and we have a breakout player scenario. Ambry Thomas will not move up to superstar development. So whatever, but we get back in the W column more importantly, and we are now tied with the Seahawks for the number one team in the NFC West. But more importantly than that, let's see who we're going to steal from this Bolts team. They got great corners. They got great wide receivers. Please. We need both of those positions and Defensive tackle, okay, something that we haven't really seen. We haven't seen that at all so far this episode. Had to finesse it a little bit, but the chart because the Chargers were over the cap. But trading Armin Watts over for the uh, second-year player now Shaw from the Chargers. Let's keep this momentum going. We gotta find a way to surpass and gain some ground on the Seahawks here, taking on the Falcons, whom we have already beat in this episode let's keep the streak going let's go 27 21 victory Kyle Pitts 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 not Kyle Pitts it is freaking fullback oh man that is so lackluster they got one fullback rookie Juan McMichael out of Oklahoma I don't even think that we have a fullback do we have a fullback I am gonna have to check that because I don't think that we do and if we don't we're gonna have to trade we we don't have a true fullback so we are gonna have to trade halfback Kyron Williams who's playing in that position so, I mean, whatever. That was about as anticlimactic as watching paint dry. Why can't I just steal a wide receiver? That is all I want. I don't ask for much in life. Maybe another victory over the Cardinals would be nice, but I just want a wide receiver. And I guess the second best thing is a victory over the Cardinals and we have a breakout running back scenario. Could this be Najee Harris? Najee Harris with a chance to advance to superstar X factor. That would actually be astronomical, but he has to get four touchdowns or 200 plus rushing and receiving yards. How many times have we stolen a player from the Arizona Cardinals? I mean, it's actually funny at this point and what do you know another offensive lineman we get to steal a left tackle Yay! I mean, i guess if anything they do got dj humphreys who is a good solid veteran so i guess we'll just continue to bolster that offensive line he does actually fit into the rotation pretty nice as we convert him to center 
He is now our highest rated overall center, DJ Humphreys. And we move Joshua Zudu over to that right guard spot. So I guess I'm not upset with it. This one is going to be a challenge, though. Taking on the Buffalo Bills, although they're virtually the same as us in terms of record. And man, I would not be upset with stealing Josh Allen or Stefan Diggs if we can somehow beat the Bills which we don't nice rebound game though against the minnesota vikings as we squeak out a victory 31 28 and most importantly we remain atop the standings of this nfc west and the vikings have a lot of players that i would definitely be interested in stealing namely this gentleman right here justin jefferson or even potentially tj hawkinson I would take either of those strapping young lads. Just don't give me a linebacker. I'm begging you. We've had so many linebackers or we don't need a free safety either. Why are you giving me positions that I don't need? Madden Wheel, why do you hate me? We acquire Lewis Seen and say goodbye to Mr. Yeast himself. Goodbye, Yeast. You've served us well. And you know what? I did the same thing with Lewis Seen that I did with Ambry Thomas. Seeing as how we're already good in the safety position, I just went ahead and converted him to quarterback. And now we got two star development cornerbacks on our team. How about this? In week 15, we are currently the Bam. number two seed in the NFC. Why is the NFC so terrible? I do not know the answer to that question. Why are we taking on the Arizona Cardinals again? I don't well the answer to that question is because they're in our division and we play them two times per year but if we beat the Cardinals again I don't think we've lost to the Cardinals not one single time this entire season and I just want to steal DeAndre Hopkins can I steal DeAndre Hopkins yes. we did win 42 to 20 so maybe I can steal DeAndre Hopkins I am so sick of stealing offensive linemen man give me something to be excited about QB QB, wait a second, wait a second, hold on, hold the freaking phone. This is very interesting. Let's take a look at our quarterback. Our quarterback is Gordon Radigan. He has an upgrade, so okay, I guess, well, I guess I'm giving it to Scrambler. I just press X too fast. He is a second year star development player, already a 79. If I would have gotten this at the beginning of the episode, I probably would have stolen Kyler Murray, but I'm not sure if I, I mean, Kyler is, Kyler's better. He's 83 rated overall superstar development player, but his team is worse than ours. Our team is playing good. And you know what? I don't really want to shake anything up. So I guess I'm, probably just gonna steal oh. Owen here okay so definitely had to finesse this one because I was not trying to give up our quarterback in exchange for Kyler Murray so oh. goodbye Matthew Stafford hello John Wolford we also acquired a couple other players who aren't gonna do really anything for us and we had to give up a second round pick but I just did not want to shake things up too much and I did not want to give up our second year quarterback. He's playing too good. Kyler Murray is good, yes, but I don't want to shake anything up. So I don't know, call that cheese if you want to, whatever, it's my rules. I still traded a quarterback for a quarterback, so get over it. Taking on a surprisingly good New York Jets team here, and this one is big. Again, we're in the playoffs, second seed, but our division rival Seahawks are right on our heels, so we really got to win this game. This would be very big if we could come away with this W, and we lost by one point, and now the Seahawks are tied with us for this division. No bueno. Look at our stats for the season. We are top 10 offense. So Gordon Radigan, that's what I'm saying. And we still maintain this second ranked overall defense. And that is exactly why this gentleman right here, Gordon Radigan, I did not want to part ways with him. Threatening to go over 4,500 yards maybe this season. 30 touchdowns to only nine interceptions, very good ratio. And look at my man, Najee Harris. What a clutch pickup, what a clutch steal. 
He was may reach 1500 yards rushing on the season and has 15 touchdowns. So you love to see that. I mean, freaking two, two at well is our number one wide receiver. Can we please get a wide receiver, please? That is all I am asking. We are taking on the Green Bay Packers who don't really have any wide receivers that I know of. They're six and nine, so you got to figure that we should be able to beat them. And look who we play in week 18. None other than the Seattle Seahawks, who we are battling with for first place in the NFC West. But let's worry about the Green Bay Packers right now. And we do barely edge them by three points, and we will be able to steal a player from the Packers roster. Who do they even got though? I mean, they got Jair Alexander. That would be huge. That that would just be a game changer. They got Rashawn Gary, but we don't need him. They have David Bakhtiari. We could use him, yes. They don't really have anybody. They got Luke Taylor. Luke Taylor, the country Western singer that I referenced earlier in the season. And they also do got Christian Watson, who is now up to superstar development. So interesting let's see what this wheel has in store for us don't really know who i want i know i could definitely use jair alexander and just don't be a quarterback center really we don't need any more offensive linemen i guess it's about an even swap and we still got dj humphreys as our starting center so whatever quite possibly the biggest game of the episode so far as we take on the seattle seahawks here and they are second place in the division if they win this game they may just edge us for first place we're trying to hold on to that number two seed in the playoffs in the nfc and can we beat the seattle seahawks and maybe steal we we do beat the seattle seahawks 34 to 23 so just give me d just give me dk metcalf man that's all i'm asking for can we get something besides offensive linemen that's that's really all i'm asking for tight end tight end okay so tight end a brand new position that we have not seen on this wheel so far in this episode who do the seahawks even have at tight end these days they got no fant okay i mean no offense 82 so is tyler higby our tight end he's also 82 but you know what i am a-okay with having 282 rated overall tight ends as tight end number one and tight end number two and noah fan will slide in nicely as the second option behind tyler higby so we made it to the wild card playoffs this is the team that you see before you we have gordon radigan as our quarterback Najee harris as our running back we have is it mark patrick i want to say martin patrick right Mart martin patrick as our wide receiver who we drafted last year as our wide receiver number one brian edwards is our wide receiver number two and freaking tutu atwell offensive line looking pretty good tight end looking much better now we all know about the defense needs no introduction we got micah parsons nick bosa aaron donald bobby brown playing really good we got good linebackers we have good uh tyree stamper the free safety we drafted is star development thought he might be superstar but no he is star but still a very high rated overall player yeah this team looking really good much better when we started this team was a 71 i want to say and we got them all the way up to an 82 and we are taking on the carolina panthers in our first playoff appearance of the episode so you know i'm jumping into this one here we are going to do the fast sim and we're gonna be at home as we are the somehow that well we won our division so there you go that's how we are the number two seed but we are the number two seed so this game is gonna have to go through sofi stadium and i really got a good feeling about this one i'm excited about this one we are going to go into the fast sim here so, you know, we'll see what happens that we, okay, well, what happened is we just scored right away. There you go. Panthers answer on a field goal from Graham Gano, but we strike back. Panthers got a safety. Okay, 10-5 is your score as we're into the second uh, second quarter here, getting close to halftime. We add a field goal, so 13-5, to now 20-5, to really weird score. Carolina Panthers aren't really able to do nothing. Rams still pouring, still pouring the points on. Still 34 to 12. There's no shot that the Carolina Panthers can come back in this game. 
41 with an offensive explosion from the Los Angeles Rams in their first playoff appearance of the episode. I can't believe it. I didn't even have to jump into that one. 41 to 19, and we are going to advance to the divisional round. Let's see how our team did. Gordon Radigan, just amazing. Just a perfect specimen of a human being, almost with a perfect quarterback rating at 155.1, 286 yards, three picks, zero interceptions, and Bryce Young, I uh, don't know if this was his playoff debut or not, but he didn't play that well. Two in touchdowns to two interceptions. Najee Harris just exploded onto the scene. 141 yard, 140 yards. Don't know where I got the one from. One touchdown, maybe. That's where I got it from. Miles Sanders now in Carolina. He didn't really have that good of a game. And receiving Panthers now got Brandon Ayuk, but Martin Patrick, our second year player. And how about Tutu Atwell? Maybe he is a wide receiver number one. I don't know. I don't question these things. It's all up to the wheel and the Madden gods. Nick Bosa had a sack, and that is about it bobby browns and bobby brown and michael parsons split one and then ernest jones our middle linebacker randomly had two interceptions and yes that does count as a victory so that means we do get to steal a player let's see who we can acquire from this carolina panthers squad don't really know now we get a wide receiver now we get a wide receiver but you know what i am okay with that because Upgrading the wide receiver position while we are in the playoffs? Yes, sign me the frick up. Who do the Panthers have? I mean, we know they have Brandon Ayuk, that's for sure. And they also got Michael Thomas, but you know what? I think that Brand Brand Ayuk's gonna be the move. He is going to be the move, absolutely. Welcome to the squad, 40 rated overall punter Brandon Ayuk. And Brandon Ayuk will fit nicely in as our wide receiver number one to play alongside Martin Patrick as our wide receiver number two. And how clutch was that? Our first playoff appearance was a blowout win against the Carolina Panthers. And just in case anybody was curious, no, we do not force him around here. 41-19 was a true score with a, I guess, truly talented LA Rams team so there you go and we got to steal finally a wide receiver so let's go ahead and sim and see who we are going to play in the divisional round Atlanta Falcons who we are no stranger to at all we have beaten them a couple times in this episode and what are the Falcons working with we know obviously they got Kyle Pitts yes they got Kyle Pitts good right guard they got Jesse Bates now okay Drake London progressing pretty well. So, I mean, Falcons are a good team. Yes, but again, beatable. And we've already beaten them at least once. I want to say twice, maybe. So, let's go ahead. And again, it's going to have to go through SoFi Stadium. So, let's go ahead and see if we can advance to the conference championship. That would just be amazing. And maybe we can steal a player from the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons get the ball first here. We'll see if this number two rated defense can stop him. We do hold him to a field goal, but we also answer with the field goal of our own. Field goal battle here back and forth, but now the Rams finally score a touchdown and go up 10 to six. So that is good to see. Halftime approaching, it's now 13 to six. Falcons, they don't score before half. Rams get the ball back again and we put up three so now 16 to 6 low scoring defensive affair falcons not able to score on their last drive rams answer with another field goal so 19 to 6 now can the falcons do anything no time is going to run out 25 to 6 that's what i am talking about baby you love to see it and we're going to be able to steal another player from the Falcons. Daniel Jones now on the Falcons. He didn't play good at all. Gordon Radigan didn't play very good in his own respect. This seems to be a defensive minded game as the point total is a lot of field goals back and forth there. Nick Bosa had three sacks. Aaron Donald had two. Some Falcons had two as well. But you know what? At the end of the day, the only score that matters is that score that you see in front of you. 20 five to six and we are going to advance to the conference 
championship and more importantly than that we are also going to be able to steal a player from this atlanta falcons team what do you got for me madden wheel of fate give me something good give me something that we can carry into this divisional oh another offensive lineman just because we don't need any more of those I just realized we only have one right tackle, and it is a good one, Rob Havenstein. So who do the Falcons have? This could be a potential downgrade, and it probably will. Caleb Rice, I mean, I okay. guess at least he's star development, but that's definitely not what you want to see. Goodbye, Rob. You have served us well. Welcome, Caleb Rice. I hope that you also serve us well. Um, so 20 41 19 first playoff victory against the Panthers 25 6 second playoff victory against the Falcons and we are moving on to the NFC Conference Championship who will we play in this game that is the question how fitting is that how freaking fitting is that that we play the Seattle Seahawks our division rival who we just beat in the last game of the season to secure our number two seed and the Seattle Seahawks, they were the sixth seed and they beat the Lions and they beat the Cowboys and now they are playing us. We got the two seeds, Bengals and the Rams and the five and the six seed, Bills and the Seahawks. I'll tell you what, if we could beat the Seahawks here, I will feel very good about really whoever we have to play in the Super Bowl. So. Hey, it's it's gone good so far for us. You know, again, still going through SoFi Stadium. So I am okay with that. I haven't had to jump in yet to a game, which is great because I don't really want to play any downs if I don't have to. Okay, Hawks get the ball first here. Very quickly punt it back to us. Okay, we strike first with the field goal, but the Seahawks do answer with a touchdown. And we punt it back to the Seahawks, so not able to put any points on the board. Seahawks do score. It's now 10 to 3. And Raven or Ravens, what am I saying? Ravens. Rams offense needs to wake up. 17 to 10, so we do get a little bit closer. We punt it back to them, though. Now we got the ball back at 17 17. We're knotted up here. Seahawks punt the ball back to us. Can we score? We do. We go up 24 17. Hawks got the ball back. They answer 24 24. We got a tie ball game we punt it back to the Seahawks now we got it I'm jumping in I gotta jump in here I gotta jump in here we got the ball chance to end this thing I'm not gonna let the CPU screw this thing up for me no chance no how it's been a good game so far zero turnovers for us and we got a minute 30 seconds to go here so we need to do something oh we got a tight end there it looks like tyler higby open enough stay in bounds too let's keep this clock going seahawks gonna call a timeout which i do not blame them for gotta figure we are in field goal range now so let's just go ahead and do a halfback dive here kill some of this clock just don't fumble it Najee harris please only thing i ask of you brother and we should be able to kill this clock and kick a field goal hopefully i make it and if we do that, guys, we're moving on to the Super Bowl in our very first playoff appearance of the series. So, okay, did not expect it to go like that, but that is the way that the uh, chips have fallen, so to speak. So third and eight, all we got to do is just kill some of this clock and call a timeout, kick a field goal and get out of SoFi with the victory. We are playing in a dome here, so no wind. That is uh, always good to see. And kick is up. I think it's good if it's not blocked. And right down the middle. So barring something unforeseen, we are going to move on to the Super Bowl in year number three. Okay. Did not. And, and we'll be able to steal freaking assuming they still have him. DK Metcalf, who I've been talking about all episode maybe steal dk metcalf again it's not up to me it is up to the wheel and we're just gonna go prevent there's nothing else left to do in this game besides go prevent and we can sneak out of here with uh, just gonna check it down okay i mean you better get to the line and you better spike it or clock it i don't know if i've ever seen the cpu spike it if i'm being honest they may not know how to spike it those checkdowns ain't gonna work, man. Hawks are gonna hurry up to the line, but to no avail. 
clock runs out. I don't think the CPU knows how to spike the ball. And just like that, we are going to advance to the Super Bowl. It seemed like a low scoring game at first. Both QBs didn't really do too much to impress, but uh, running backs, not really either. I mean, I guess maybe this was just a, a defensive game, defensive minded game. We also get to steal a player. So there you go. And a couple upgrades. Very nice. Okay, we stole Noah Fant last time. Who are we going to steal this time? That is the question. Magical Wheel of Truth. Kicker. Okay, actually, that might be good because I believe our kicker sucks. Yeah, I'll definitely bring in Will Lutz. That is a improvement over whoever this guy is. <laughs> Okay, Seahawks, we beat them. Falcons, we beat them. Panthers, we beat them. We're simming over to the Super Bowl. And I'll tell you what, I did not expect to already be here. But you know what? I'm not really surprised, I guess, because we got a great defense and we are playing the Buffalo Bills, who, again, we already beat them, right? I, I think we already beat them. And just looking at the yearly awards here, did any of our players win it? No. Jalen Hurts wins the MVP, Coach of the Year. Uh, okay, well, Police Sub does get the Coach of the Year nod, and if you guys would be so gracious, Police Sub. Team, I would say, looking, looking pretty good. I mean, we got star development almost every category. We got a couple superstars. Uh, defense, this is probably why we're here, if I'm being honest. I mean, look, if you got to play a team that has Nick Bosa, Aaron Donald, and Michael Parsons, you're probably not gonna stand a good chance. Buffalo Bills, Los Angeles Rams, nothing else left to say other than we're playing the Super Bowl, it's in Dallas. And if we win this game, that is going to cap off a very surprising, yet also very fun episode. And if you guys wanna see me do more stuff like this, let me know in the comments. If you're already subscribed to this channel, thank you. If you're not, consider subscribing, consider liking the videos. Helps tremendously with the growth of the channel. And it looks like Rams are going to get the ball first here. So we'll jump into the quick sim and see what we got in store. So we punt it to the Bills already. Bills score on a touchdown on their first drive. We match them. So that's good to see Bills with a field goal. And Rams got the ball here and we answer with a touchdown. So we're up 14-10. Bills draw near 14 to 13. Rams punt the ball back to the Bills. Bills punt the ball back to the Rams. Rams back to the Bills. It's a real punt fest. Bills go up 16-14. We might have to jump in. Are we gonna have to jump in? I think we're gonna jump in right here. It's also third and seven, too. So uh don't know why I called play action, but I did. And uh, we might just actually have a receiver. No, that was a terrible pass there by uh, Radigan. And we're going to be forced to punt. Open our defense can come up. Oh, somehow we got the ball back. What happened? I don't know what just happened. We got the ball back somehow. So we're jumping back. And maybe it was, I guess it was a turnover. Not 100% sure. Okay, it must have been a turnover because we are actually very close to... Uh, the end zone here in the red zone. So I'm actually gonna audible this into a run play with Najee and he doesn't really get good blockers, unfortunately. Second and seven, need good clock management, but primary focus is of course to get it into the end zone. So that is what we care about. Gonna be a quick pass there to our receiver and he gets very close, but he is gonna be stopped one yard short of the stick. Confident Najee can pick this thing up if he gets some good blockers, which he does and he bounces off, cuts to the left side and Najee Harris finds the end zone to put the Rams up. And yes, of course, we are gonna go for two in this situation. Why wouldn't we? We wanna make it at least a field goal game. Uh, we have Brandon Ayuk, but he's also being covered by Micah Hyde, which is a tall task indeed. But he left uh, Brandon Ayuk, and Brandon Ayuk does convert the two-point. So there you go. Clutch indeed, my friends. And right now we have the lead. Back on defense we go. Last time we got the ball back, and we got the ball back again. We're jumping in. We got it. What, what just happened? There had to be a turnover, I want to say, or maybe a, a, a quick three and out, I suppose. But at any rate, we got the ball back and we have a chance to win the Super Bowl. 19 to 22 against the Buffalo Bills. One first down virtually ends this thing here and looks like, oh, Najee almost got it. Does get very close. 
Bill's going to call a timeout, but we are in a very good position and we are in no rush now. Najee all the way. It's got to be Najee all the way. It is Najee all the way. First down. That should effectively end this game. We are going to go into two clock mode. I probably should have put the uh, ball carrier on conservative. I did not. Hopefully that does not come back to bite us, but effectively ends the game here as the Bills are only going to be able to stop the clock one more time. First postseason appearance. And yes, I had to jump in a few times. Sometimes you got to jump in a few times. Sometimes you cannot rely on the CPU. I send the most of the way, but, uh, you know, I'm going to jump in at the fourth quarter. If it's a uh, the games were close, though, it was never a blowout. And Najee Harris going to end this thing. If it wasn't over already. It's over now. Los Angeles Rams are your Super Bowl champions. 22 to 19. The wheel decided our fate. We started out terrible. 71 rated overall team. We slowly added pieces, added a lot of linebackers and offensive linemen there at the beginning. But as we kind of progressed, we got better. Radigan didn't do anything. What happened in this game? Neither did Josh Allen. Where was the offense? I'll tell you where the offense was. It was right here. Najee Harris, a buck 25, two touchdowns. And uh, I'm thinking that the defense had to have made some plays here. Manuel Mosley, uh, he had an interception, so that's cool. Uh, did anybody have a forced fumble? No. So I guess it was just a lot of three and outs and a lot of quick drives and a lot of punts. Regardless of what it was, what it is, is the Los Angeles Rams Super Bowl victory. Uh, that was fun. I got to be honest. That was fun. I enjoyed using that wheel. I'm going to try to use that more. If you guys uh, are subscribed to this channel and have been following me either on the Cupcake Relocation franchise or possibly on the Packers five-year rebuild, thank you very much. I appreciate your support. This is your first time here and you enjoy this video consider liking it consider subscribing i upload full-length franchise content weekly to our madden 23 cupcake relocation franchise and i also do fun one-off videos like this from time to time too and if you guys want to see me do a certain concept or a certain rebuild let me know in the comments below i would be more than happy to do that but that's gonna do it for me tonight guys as always i appreciate you stopping by check out my green bay packers five-year rebuild if you haven't already it's a pretty good episode i will catch you on the next one until then peace